Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and this is a complete beginner's guide to the God Wars dungeon in old school RuneScape. In this video, we'll be looking at the Bandos Stronghold. I'm going to cover absolutely everything you'll need to know to start killing this boss for yourself, from the quests and teleports to get there, to preparation and equipment, then finally the fight itself. We'll cover all the common tactics and then take a look at some handy tips and tricks for group, duo and solo trips. This guide is extremely long and very detailed. If you know what you're looking for, you can skip to it using the time codes in the description below. But if you've never been to God Wars before, then grab a drink and settle in. We have a lot to cover. A huge thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch, who make all my videos possible. Right, Bandos God Wars, let's learn this. Before we cover the specifics of Bandos, let's just get clued up on God Wars in general. What is the God Wars dungeon? Just north of Trollheim Mountain, there's an icy cavern guarded by wolves. Inside is a giant four-way battle for dominance between the chosen avatars of four major runescape gods. The goblin big high war god Bandos, the god of the skies Armadil, the good god Saradomin, and the bad god Zamorak. The gods themselves aren't physically there, but they've sent super powerful avatars to represent them. The center of the God Wars dungeon is a huge free-for-all battle between all four sides. Then each corner of the dungeon is a specific god's encampment, which itself contains the boss room of that god. Northwest is Bandos, northeast is Zamorak, southeast is Saradomin, and southwest is Armadil. As a player, you can journey into these specific quarters, then into the boss rooms, fight the avatars of the gods, and potentially find some of the most powerful and most expensive equipment in the game. How do you get there? To get to God Wars, you do need to have certain quests and certain stats. The entrance to the dungeon is just north of Trollheim Mountain, so you'll need to have completed Death Plateau and got most of the way through its sequel, Troll Stronghold. If you've also completed Edgar's Ruse and have over 61 magic, which is highly recommended, you can teleport to Trollheim and run from there. If you have not completed Edgar's Ruse, or you don't have 61 magic, you'll need some climbing boots to be able to traverse the southern mountain route. Getting there also involves running past some dangerous rock thrower trolls, so 40 prayer to use protect from missiles is needed. Once at the entrance, you'll then need to pass by a boulder. To do this, you'll need either 60 strength to push it out the way, or 60 agility to slide past it. The very first time you go to God Wars, you'll need to bring a rope to help you climb down into the icy cavern. You only need to bring this once, then it remains tied there. Let's assume you've completed all the suggested quests, have all the levels, and have teleported to Trollheim. You'll run down the mountain, then head to the Northern Passage, pray protect from range while going past the rock thrower trolls, and either push past or slide past the boulder. You're now only a short walk from the cave entrance, but be careful. While in this snowy section, your stats will be constantly drained. Your run and special attack energy will be reduced down to zero, and you'll be attacked by aggressive ice wolves. Use your rope with the hole and climb down. You're now inside God Wars. Surviving the Central Room the central room of the dungeon contains the armies of all four gods fighting each other, from low-level goblins to powerful spiritual mages, and when you enter, they'll attack you too. However, there is actually a way we can make every enemy in this room non-aggressive. If you have an item of that specific god equipped, then all monsters of that god will leave you alone. This means if we have a single item affiliated with each of the four gods equipped, we're entirely safe while in this room. You can wear any item from any god as long as you have all four covered. Cloaks, croziers, stoles, armor, weapons. As long as it's affiliated with that god, all the enemies will completely ignore you. Now we know how to get here and how to survive in the main room, let's get specific and look at the Bandos Stronghold. The Bandos Quarter, getting kill count and the hammer door. While in the central room, you'll see this box on your screen showing how many of a specific god's followers you've killed while you're here. This count will reset whenever you leave. In order to leave the central area and enter a specific god quarter, you need to have killed at least 40 of their followers. This is known as getting kill count, so when you're in a group and someone says, I'm here now, just getting kill count, this is what they're doing. The easiest Bandos enemies to kill are the low-level flag-bearing goblins or the hobgoblins. Along with a kill count, each god quarter also has a specific requirement for entry, either a skill or an item. For the Bandos Stronghold, you'll need to be both 70 strength and have a simple hammer. Once you have 40 Bandos followers killed, 
you'll be allowed to open this large door by hitting it with the hammer. This gets you into the Bandos quarter of God Wars, but this isn't the boss room. It's just a smaller, more Bandos specific part of the dungeon. In this quarter, you'll find Bandos spiritual warriors, mages, and rangers, along with orcs and ogres, and a few Zamorak creatures they're fighting against. If you're wearing both a Bandos and Zamorak item while in this quarter, you are completely safe. Beyond here is the boss room, so this is where your group will meet before charging in to take on the avatars of Bandos. The bosses, General Grador and his minions. The final thing to understand before we get ready to actually do this are the bosses themselves. While most people refer to this enemy as Bandos, that's not actually correct. This is the leader of the Bandosian army, General Grador, and he's supported by three minions. Now I find things are much less scary when you understand them, so let's get to know our enemy. General Grado is the big green guy. He's a level 624 Org, possibly the last remaining Org in RuneScape. He has two attacks, a melee punch that hits one player, and a ranged attack where he smashes the ground and sends projectiles at everyone in the room. On any given attack, there's a two-thirds chance he'll use a melee punch and a one-third chance he'll use range. The melee punch is extremely dangerous, with high accuracy and a max hit of 60. Because of this, while fighting General Grador, protect from melee must be kept on at all times. The ranged attack isn't as accurate, but does have a minimum hit of 15 and a maximum hit of 35. Along with Grado, you'll have three smaller support minions to deal with. Each minion uses either melee magic or the range combat style. The minions don't have any super powerful special attacks, but they will change who they attack if there's more than one player in the room. They will usually attack the last person to hit Grador, so you're never entirely safe. Each minion will attack once every three seconds. Sometimes these attacks line up, sometimes they don't. Sergeant Strongstack is the melee fighter. He'll attack with a flail and has a max hit of 15. Sergeant Steel Will is the magic minion with a max hit of 16. And Sergeant Grimspike is the ranger, with a max hit of 21. Because the ranged minion has the most damaging attack, and General Grador has a multi-target ranged attack, if you're not currently tanking Grador, it's recommended to pray protect from range. Now we know our enemy, let's look at the stats and equipment we'll need to kill them. Recommended stats. This section will cover the recommended stats you'll need for a group, duo, or solo play. If you're new to God Wars, going with a group is highly recommended. While in the boss room, General Grador will attack the first player he sees, which can be manipulated by attacking him the moment he spawns. This means one player will become the tank for that kill. In groups, it's normal to have the player with the highest defense play the role of the tank. They'll attack Grador the moment he spawns and keep protect from melee on the entire time. The other players will focus on doing the damage. So let's look at the ideal stats. Tanking in a group. If you're responsible for tanking while in a group, say three or more players, you won't need to be maxed, as each kill will be significantly quicker. You won't be responsible for the majority of the damage, but you'll still be able to do some, so 60 attack for dragon weapons, ideally 70 to use an abyssal whip, is fine. If you're ranging, then a one-handed ranged weapon like a dragon crossbow will allow you to still equip a shield. For defense, a minimum of 70 to wear Barrow's armor is a must. More is better, and 75 allows for a Dragonfire shield. Hit points must be above 60. If your prayer fails and you get punched, there's always the chance of being hit for 60, so having over 60 health prevents you from being one-shot killed. The higher your magic level, the less damage you'll be taking from the mage, so 65 or higher is fine, 70 is great. For prayer, you'll need 43 or more minimum. Protect from melee is essential, and if you can get 60, then do the Knight's Training Ground for Chivalry, it will help a lot. Tanking in a duo. If it's just you and a friend going, you're going to have to do a lot more damage. This will mean reducing the amount of times you need to eat and increasing your own DPS. 80 attack, strength, and defense should make duo tanking possible. 80 or more hit points lets you last a bit longer without eating, and 70 or more magic boosts your mage defense. 70 or more prayer and piety is now essential to boost your defense and outgoing damage. DPS in a group. If you're in a large group and you're not tanking, your job is to kill Grador, so you'll be focusing on damage. 60 attack for dragon weapons is the lowest you should go, but 70 for a whip is ideal. You'll need a minimum of 70 strength to enter the Bandos quarter anyway. If you're ranging, then 60 range for dragon crossbows is the lowest you should have. While it's possible to use magic, it's not a good idea. 
you won't hit as much, and magical robes have very low defense. You'll still need some defense from the minions' attacks, so 60 or more is fine. Your magic should ideally be above 60 just to reduce some of the mage minion damage. For prayer, you'll still need 43 or more, because if the tank misses the attack and Grador focuses on you, you'll need to protect from melee. DPS in a duo. If it's just you and a mate and you're the damage dealer, you'll need to maximize every hit. So attack and strength of 80 are important, 80 hit points to survive the minions and 70 magic and prayer for reduced magical damage and piety. If you're ranging, then 75 for a blowpipe is important. It's not recommended to use magic if duoing. Solo. If you want to go and kill General Grador solo, then you need to be both the tank and the DPS. To make the trips worth it, you'll want 90 or more in every combat stat and a minimum of 70 prayer with piety unlocked. Recommended equipment. With the stats covered, let's gear up. I'll be looking at a mid-level setup that gives you all the stats you need and keeps it within a realistic budget. You will not need an Elysian shield. While it's possible to use ranged attacks, there's an advantage to using melee. We'll cover that in the God Items section. Tank Equipment If you're tanking, you'll be praying protect from melee the entire time Grador is alive. Because of this, you'll mainly be taking damage from ranged and magical sources, so we'll be prioritizing that. For a helmet, Verax Helm is great. It's got fantastic range defense and a nice prayer bonus. If you can't afford one, then a Helm of Nata's Knot is a good second choice. For your neck item, an Amulet of Fury is the best option, as it maximizes all the defensive stats. Failing this, use an Amulet of Glory. Capes. Ideally, you'll want a Fire Cape. If you're struggling to beat Jad, I've got a complete beginner's guide to the Fire Cape on my channel. Below the Fire Cape, a Hit Points Skill Cape or Vestment Cape of any god. While tanking, it's not advisable to use the range combat style, because wearing an Ava's device will reduce the defense you could be getting from a better defensive cape. For the torso, we'll want Barrow's armor. Torag's and Guthan's body are both excellent range defense, but Carol's will help us absorb any magical attacks. For the legs, we'll make up for whatever the torso is lacking, so if you're wearing a Torag's body which has great range defense, then go with Carol's for the magic defense. But if you've gone with Carol's body, then a Verax skirt is a fantastic range defense choice. For a main hand weapon, an Abyssal Whip is perfect. The Abyssal Tentacle is better, but it's a more expensive option. At the bare minimum, you'll want a Dragon Scimitar. If you're ranging, a Dragon Crossbow with decent bolts will do. Don't use a two-handed weapon. Remember, you're the tank, and the increased damage isn't worth it. You'll want your offhand using a shield. In the offhand, a charged Dragonfire Shield is an excellent choice. They're relatively cheap right now and have great stats for their price. Failing this, a Crystal Shield is good. Or the Tsar Obsidian Shield, the Tox Ket Zil. While you can use a Dragon Defender if you have one, you'll be losing a lot of defensive stats. In the ammo slot, provided you're not ranging, use an Unholy Blessing or a War Blessing. I'll explain why it needs to be those specific blessings in the God Items section. For the gloves, the best recipe for disaster gloves you have, ideally Barrows or Dragon. But if you haven't got that far in the quest, a Combat Bracelet will do. For boots, you'll want to go with Dragon. They're cheap, they're decent, and they have a Strength Boost to help your melee damage. Now rings can get expensive. A Ring of Suffering or Granite Ring are great defensive rings but cost a lot. A Berserker Ring will improve melee damage but at the lower end, a Warrior Ring or Seer's Ring imbued from the Nightmare Zone will help accuracy or magical defense. If you need a Nightmare Zone guide, I've got a complete one on my channel. What about special attack weapons? Honestly, in a group, you might not need one, but if you insist on having a special weapon, then a Bandos God Sword will help drain Grador's defense, but it does cost a lot. For fun, I sometimes take a Dragon Dagger, just to have something to use my special attack energy on. As your group size reduces into duo or solo runs, you'll need to improve every aspect of this setup, but for now, this will see you through. DPS Equipment if you're not taking the brunt of Grado's attacks, then your main damage will come from his multi-target ranged attack and the minions, so you'll be praying ranged the whole fight. As we don't need to worry too much about defense, we'll look at maximizing offense. This means void armor or elite void armor is a possibility. If you're planning on DPSing in void, then it's recommended to have over 80 in all melee stats or range, and 80 or more hit points. Void will help you hit hard, 
but you'll end up taking a lot more damage. For a helmet, a Nate's Knot if you're using melee, and a Blessed God Coif for ranged. For the neck, an Amulet of Fury is the best choice for all styles. If that's out of the price range, just use an Amulet of Glory. For the melee DPS, a Fire Cape or Obsidian Cape. And if you're ranging, use the best Avers device you have. Now as a melee attacker, you won't actually need much melee defense, so you will be using the body and leg slots to add to our range and mage defense. So Carol's top or black dragon hide body helps us absorb some magical damage, and Verax plate skirt or Torax legs beefs up our range defense. If you're attacking with range, then a blessed body or chaps work just as well, but give slightly less defensive stats than Carol's. For a weapon, an Abyssal Whip is great. It's a fast, affordable option. If you're ranging, then a Dragon or Rune Crossbow with the best bolts you can afford will get the job done. In your offhand, a Dragon Defender or Dragon Fire Shield. If you're ranging, an Unholy Book or Book of Law is a cheap boosting option. As you're not tanking, you can afford to use a two-handed weapon, meaning you can take a God Sword or the much cheaper Saradomin Sword and rangers should use a blowpipe with adamant or better darts. Melee fighters will want to take an unholy blessing or a war blessing in the ammo slot, and rangers will want to use whatever they can afford. For gloves, it's the best recipe for disaster gloves. Barrows ideally, but dragon or rune will work. Below that, a combat bracelet for melee fighters and god-blessed vambraces for the rangers. Boots will be Dragon if you're using melee and have completed all recommended quests, and Climbing Boots if you haven't and still need to climb over the mountain. Rangers won't need to afford Pegasians because God-blessed boots are totally fine. Melee fighters will want a Berserker Ring or a Warrior Ring, ideally imbued at the Nightmare Zone. Rangers will want an Archer's Ring, again imbued. If you can't afford these, then a Ring of Dueling will provide a nice, equipable emergency teleport. For special weapons, you don't really need one in a group. Dragon Claws are great for damage, and Bandos God Swords will lower the enemy's defense, but both are expensive choices. A Dragon Dagger Super Poisoned is nice, and for the Rangers, just use your weapon's special attack. That's almost it for gear, but there's something important to remember. When in the main room, you'll be attacked by every God follower unless you're wearing a God item. So what God items can we use? The moment you descend into the God Wars, you'll want to run north and slightly west to this little spot just south of the Bandos boss room. While here, you'll only have to worry about Bandos and Zamorak enemies. This means, if we can wear something Bandos and something Zamorak, then all we have to worry about when entering the dungeon is a few seconds of damage from the Armadil and Saradomin troops before we're safely away from them. So what items can we use? This is why using melee is useful. We can use the range ammo slot to equip an unholy blessing for a Zamorak item or a war blessing for a Bandos item, leaving only one other item to sort. The list of items you can use is extensive, but you have to make a choice. You can either equip something god-related but useless and bring an item switch before the actual boss, like an unholy symbol for Zamorak or a Zamorak cloak from the mage arena, or Equip something god-related and actually good, like Bandos armor, or Bandos-blessed ranging armor. The choice is yours, but you only need to worry about a single Bandos item and a single Zamorak item. To keep the setup super cheap, look into the War Blessing for Bandos and a Stole for Zamorak. Both should cost you less than 20,000 coins. So we're geared up and protected from the gods we need to be protected from. What do we bring in the inventory? Inventory! All players, tanks and DPS will actually have a very similar inventory setup. If it's the first time you've ever been to God Wars, you'll need to bring a rope. It's a good idea to set up the rope, then return and restock so you're not wasting a space. You'll need your hammer to actually get into the Bandos Quarter, but the small goblins you can kill for your 40 Bandos follower kill count, they actually have just over a 10% chance of dropping a hammer. So if you forget yours, it's not a big problem. Then we'll need to boost our stats, so for the melee fighters that's super combat potions, and for the rangers that's bastion potions. You don't need the divine versions, they're nice, but they're quite expensive. Three of these should be fine. Next up, we simply want to be able to restore our health and our prayer. The best method is the tried and tested Saradomin Brew and Super Restore combination. A single sip of Saradomin Brew will restore our health and boost our defense, but it will drain our other combat stats. A Super Restore will refill our prayer, 
and all of our drain stats back to normal. The correct ratio is three sips of Saradomin Brew, then one sip of Super Restore. This ratio maximizes both the healing effect of the brew and the efficiency of the restores. Plus, drinking potions doesn't interrupt combat, so we will continue attacking even while healing. Because of the 3 to 1 Sarah Brew to Super Restore ratio, plus the fact we need to drink more Super Restores for our prayer, it's best to take 12 to 16 Saradomin Brews and 6 to 9 Super Restores. If you can't afford the Saradomin Brew and Super Restore method, then Sharks or Better Food and Prayer Potions will also work. Then, for emergencies, we'll want a one-click teleport. For all those times we panic, someone dies, or Grador starts attacking us when we're out of prayer. So bring a teleport tablet, just to be safe. Fill up any extra space with anglerfish or sharks, in case we have to panic eat through some serious damage. Now our inventory is looking great, but we're not actually there. That's an issue. God Wars is miles away from anywhere. Well, the next section is all about tips and tricks to make this easier. Tips and tricks. To maximize inventory space for the trip, provided you've all got the recommended quests done, set your inventory up, then withdraw a few runes so you can teleport to Trollheim, then ideally back to somewhere else. Teleport to Trollheim and drop two things. Let's say, anglerfish. Now return to a bank. Refill your inventory and then teleport to Trollheim again, making sure you're only holding two lore runes and two fire runes. Once you arrive, you'll have two empty inventory slots, letting you pick your fish back up and done. Full, efficient inventory. If you've completed making friends with my arm, you can light the fire pit here to prevent the stat draining effect of the snowy entrance path. Once you enter the dungeon, turning on protect from range and immediately running north will prevent almost all damage from the Armadil warriors. Then hide against the northern wall and you'll only have Bandos and Zamorak troops around you. As mentioned earlier, if you forget your hammer, just kill the small goblins until one drops. If you don't want to get the 40 kill count every time, you can bring an ecumenical key dropped by one of the monsters in the Wilderness God Wars dungeon to immediately open the door. These keys are not tradable. If the boss drops food but it's about to despawn on the floor, pick it up and drop it again. Juggling food like this can help you last a lot longer. So now we're clued up, we're geared up, and we're ready to go kill Grador. Let's look at the boss room itself, and then the fight. The arena and the battle. Once you're in the Bandos quarter, your team can meet outside the Bandos boss room door. Remember, this boss room exists in the common shared overworld, meaning other teams might be there. Or worse, other teams can enter while you're in there. The Bandos room is considered one of the easier God Wars bosses, so it's often very busy, and it's not uncommon to see teams of maxed out players logging in to crash you. Because of how old school RuneScape is, there's very little you can do to stop this. The arena itself is a large rectangular room with an altar at one end. This altar is important. Praying here will fully recharge your prayer, even boosting it by one additional point for each item of that god you're wearing. But you need to wait 10 minutes between uses. If you right-click the altar and choose Teleport, it will place you back outside the room. When you're ready to go in, check your health and prayer are full, drink your combat potions, and head inside. The moment you go into the room, Grador and the minions will all attack you, meaning the first player, usually the tank, is going to take a large surge of damage. Make sure you've got Protect from Melee on and start attacking Grador. Once he's distracted, all the other players should pile in and join the fight, all attacking Grador. While Grador is alive, the tank will keep Protect from Melee on at all times, and all other players will pray Protect from Range. It's useful to have the other players attack Grador from the side or behind, simply because it's easy to see who Grador is attacking. If he spins away from the tank, everyone knows to put Protect from Melee on. While fighting, always kill Grador first. If you kill a minion while Grador is alive, the minion will respawn quickly. But once Grador is dead, you'll have a minute between each minion respawn. Once Grador is dead, there's an ideal order to kill the minions in. With Grador down, the tank can switch to praying against missiles, as the ranger has the highest hit. Because of this, killing the mage first will prevent the most damage over time. If anyone is using the full Guthans set effect to heal, leave the minions to them. With Grador and the minions dead, pick up the drops and now prepare for the next spawn. Grador will always spawn closer to the eastern wall, usually in the middle or top section. 
so the tank should stand in the centre of the room and get ready to attack Grador the moment he spawns. All other players should line up against the western wall. This is to reduce the chance that Grador will attack and focus on them before the tank has grabbed the aggro. If you're a ranged DPS, don't click too quickly when Grador spawns. If your ranged attack hits Grador before the tank, he'll focus on you instead. If this happens, switch to praying against melee, stay calm, and keep fighting. Once you've killed them all, once or twice, you'll realise it's much easier than people think. And with a good team and some food drops from Grador and his minions, you can actually last a surprisingly long time. I have higher stats than is needed here, so I've gone with the worst possible armour and weapons I can still get away with, and I've brought a small team with me. Let's pot up and see what happens when we run in. The room was empty and the boss had just been killed, so we took our positions. If the boss were alive, we'd just go straight for the kill. I was tanking, so stood central. The DPS lined up on the west wall. I made sure Protect from Melee was on before Grado spawned and attacked the moment he was in the room. Now as the tank, I'm not worried about my own DPS. All I need to do is watch my health and my prayer. If my health drops below 35, that's Grador's maximum ranged hit, I'll eat up. And if my prayer gets low, I'll drink a restore. That's pretty much it. Tanking General Grador really isn't that complicated. The DPS players killed Grador, then we switched to the minions. The mage, Sergeant Steelwill, will always spawn to the south, so we pile on him first and then finish off the other two. When they're all dead, we need to wait a minute and a half and prepare again. Five of us managed to last about an hour, and we got a Bandos hilt drop. Ultimately, loot worked out at around two million each. Drops. So why are we here? Well, Grado and his minions dropped some of the best melee armor in the game, the Bandos chestplate and Bandos tassets. Grado himself can also drop the Bandos godsword hilt, and there's always the chance of a godsword shard one, two, or three. Even without the major drops, you'll find a lot of rune items, adamantite ore, coal, coins, and nature runes. The average value of killing all four enemies is 180,000, meaning a trip will almost always pay for itself. And that's everything, a complete beginner's guide to the Bandos stronghold of God Wars Dungeon. I hope it's been helpful. Again, a big thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch, who make all these videos possible. And a big thank you to the Community RS clan for joining me on the Bandos trip and helping me get the footage. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord. And as always, have a great day.